Good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning as we share some thoughts about a favourite picture from the Bible about our life with Christ. In Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 to 30, Jesus tells us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The purpose of a yoke is to join two animals together so that they can pull a heavy cart or burden. In Malawi, I saw many carts, sometimes yoked to donkeys, sometimes with cows, um, and sometimes the animals were just tied onto the cart. In that time, they could go in their own way, and it's hard to control them and to get the cart pulled. And other times, there was a yoke over their necks, joining them together. And the yoke allowed one of the animals to gently guide the other. And they were in step together, they couldn't go their separate ways. And as they pulled together in the same direction, it was much easier. And Christ says, take my yoke upon you, and it will be easy and light. And Jesus was speaking to people at that time who were burdened by a heavy burden of the law. The Pharisees had added many extra laws to the law that God had given. And in doing so, they had placed a heavy burden on people's necks. And Jesus contrasted his yoke to the heavy burden of, the, of trying to keep the law. His yoke makes it easy to live the life that God wants us to live. In the Bible, the picture of being yoked is also applied to being influenced by others. And it's applied to marriage when we consider getting yoked to each other. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, we are given this advice. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So a yoke can sometimes be very difficult if we're not yoked to someone or something that is good. The picture of marriage is often used to describe our relationship to Christ. Paul speaks to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, saying that he is betrothing them to one husband and presenting them as a pure virgin to Christ. And the church is described as the bride of Christ and Christ as the bridegroom. Both the Old and the New Testaments use the metaphor of marriage to describe our relationship with Christ and God, emphasising a deeply personal and intimate two-sided relationship. And it is Christ who initiates that relationship. Christ says, come to me. I've been reading a book called How People Change by Timothy Lane and Paul Tripp. And in this, they point out the most obvious and important question that any prospective spouse asks is, who is this person I'm going to marry? Now we know that God knows all about us. He has answered that question. For in Psalm 139, as Jonathan was telling us earlier in the week, God knows us intimately. But how well do we know Christ? I want us to read a passage from Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 24, when Paul gives us a stunning description of our incomparable bridegroom. Now I'm going to read from the message, and perhaps later you might like to read it from a more familiar version. So Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 25. We look at the sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organises and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, 
towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. You yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time, you all had your backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. But now, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to the God side and put your lives together, whole and holy, in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded and steady in that bond of trust, constantly tune in to the message, careful not to be distracted or diverted. There is no other message, just this one. Every creature under heaven gets the same message. I, Paul, am a messenger of this message. In this passage, Paul tells us many different things about this Son of God, about Jesus, our Saviour. He tells us that he is God, that he's the firstborn, that he is eternal, that he is the creator of all things that he is supreme and that he is the fullness of God, reconciling all things to himself. And he is the peacemaker. He is the one who brings us to himself and allows us to have a relationship with God the Father. It's through the Holy Spirit in us, keeping us yoked to Christ, that allows us to live the life that God wants us to live. So today, perhaps we should try to get to know Christ better, to think about who he is and the life that he wants us to lead, yoked to him, joined to him, walking in step with him. So let us now pray to this beautiful God, to Jesus, who is so much above everything in creation and who is the one who calls us to him. So let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you for the wonderful gift you gave us by sending your son to come and die for us, opening the door of salvation and the possibility of a wonderful intimate life with Christ, our bridegroom. Jesus, we thank you that although we bring nothing to this relationship except our sinful selves, and our need of forgiveness and your mercy. You call us into relationship. You want to yoke yourself with us to help us every step of the way through this life. Thank you that you are with us in the good times and in the difficult times. And sometimes even you carry us when things are really tough for us. Lord, we stand on your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's a song below called Beautiful Lord, which I hope will help us to worship God for who he is and for all that he has done for us. Thank you for listening. <laughs>